Hello and welcome to Motoring Today, your news and features electronic magazine that centers on transportation and traffic management concerns and issues, the motoring industry, motorsports, vehicle maintenance, and road safety tips, and other facets of motoring. This is Motoring Today. I'm Butch Gamboa. Now here are this week's updates in the country's transportation issues and concerns brought to you by BMW. The Philippine motoring scene was in an uproar last week in what many motorists, especially drivers, considered as a not very well thought of move by land transport authorities. The immediate implementation of the Anti-Distracted Driving Act caused an unprecedented brouhaha last week. Being a part of the Philippine Road Safety Action Plan, which is currently being updated by the DOTR, the law indeed has its place in serious efforts to reduce fatalities in road crashes caused by distracted driving. But after a few days of the enforcement of the anti-distracted driving law, the DOTR and the other implementing agencies responded to the call of the House of Congress to suspend the implementation of the said law due to the high volume of appeals from the public. The DOTR says that they will immediately revive its technical working group to conduct a review of the IRR or the Implementing Rules and Regulations as the existing one brought confusion to many. The department adds that an information and education campaign will begin as soon as the new Implementing Rules and Regulations are crafted. In the meantime, however, the DOTR encourages the public to continue the constructive discussion on this new law so as to contribute to how we could all better promote road safety, discipline, and responsible driving. Still on the DOTR's updating of the Philippine Road Safety Action Plan, the Children's Safety and Motorcycles Law Implementing Rules and Regulations has also been out. This is very important because of fatalities being recorded that involve motorcycles. The Department of Transportation recently implemented the Children's Safety on Motorcycles Law. The said law prohibits two-wheeled motorcycle riders to drive a motorcycle with a small child on board. According to the DOTR, the Implementing Rules and Regulations, or the IRR, requires the following in order for the children to be allowed on board. So, meron siyang tatlong requirement, yung mga children. The children should be able to uh, uh, comfortably uh, put his uh, foot on the foot pegs ng uh, motorcyclo. Number one, ano? Number two, kaya niyang i-embrace yung driver. Full embrace, ano? Nakaganon yung kamay niya. Pag hindi niya kayang i-embrace yung uh, kamay niya sa driver, bawal yon. And then number three, kailangan siyang naka-wear nung uh, standard helmet uh, according dun sa helmet uh, loan natin. So kapag hindi na satisfy yung ganung tatlong requirement, mauhuli yung uh, ating uh, motorcycle driver. The law covers all public roads where there is a heavy volume of vehicles and where the speed limit is more than 60 kilometers per hour. The department adds that the exception only applies to cases where a child to be transported requires immediate medical attention. The DOTR reports that the Land Transportation Office is the lead implementing agency for the said law and the agency has the authority to deputize traffic enforcers and local government units for the enforcement. For the first offense, violators will be fined 3,000 pesos, while 5,000 pesos on the second offense and 10,000 pesos for the third offense, with the suspension of driver's license for a month. Beyond the third offense, the DOTR says that the violator's licenses will be revoked. And again, uh, kaya rin tayo merong uh, children aboard the uh, motorcycle uh, law. Uh, almost 50% uh, ng uh, fatalities natin eh, on board the uh, motorcycles. No? So, ito talaga yung ina-address ng mga batas na to. So, let me remind everyone again to also focus on uh, this other law. Motorcycles have been the mode of transportation of many, especially in the provinces. We do hope that the Children's Safety on Motorcycles law 
will be strictly observed not only here in Metro Manila, but in the whole country as well. For more news and updates about road safety initiatives, here's an organization partnering with the Department of Transportation with its aim to particularly target the speed limit enforcement in the country. Imagine Law, a public interest law organization, announced their recommended actions to improve road safety enforcement in the country in partnership with the Department of Transportation. The organization released the data from the Philippine National Police that shows the increase in numbers of fatalities due to road crashes. As of uh, 2016, it's in fact, uh, since 2014, it's been sharply rising. Um, as you can see, the trend suddenly rose even higher. Um, but what's alarming is the data on fatalities because uh, last year's report shows a very sharp increase in the number of fatalities from 1,040 to 2,144. Um, and of course, this is alarming because this is more than 100%. With the organization focusing on speed as the most important risk factor in road accidents, Imagine Law recommends that the local authorities implement speed limit ordinances. According to the organization, in order for a speed limit ordinance to be effective, the local government units or LGUs must have speed measurement devices for the apprehension to be effective as well. The organization adds that additional human resources and speed limit signs would also ensure the effectivity of the enforcement. Imagine Law also advises the LGUs to identify high cross risk areas for the law enforcers to be able to efficiently conduct its enforcement activities. The organization highlights the importance of issuance of guidelines from the appropriate government agencies such as the DOTR and LTO. According to it, this will help ensure that local speed limits comply with the maximum allowable speed limits provided under Republic Act 4136. Imagine Law also adds that having a centralized database of speed limits will be helpful as it will facilitate national policy making on speed management. It's good to know that there are private entities who are working hand in hand with the government in keeping our streets safe. It's also important to highlight the importance of speed limits here in the metro, not only on highways and expressways. That's all for this week and we thank BMW Philippines for this transportation and traffic management updates. Motor of the Day now takes a short break. Welcome back. Let's now get into Motoring Today's lifelong commitment to promote road safety as we give you some road safety tips in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. Hello everyone and welcome to Motoring Today's Young Street Smarts Club. This is brought to you through the courtesy of Toyota Motor Philippines and the Toyota Foundation. My name is Susie of Magic 89.9. I'm going to give you some simple tips on how to use our roads properly and safely. Kung napapansin ninyo, marami na tayong roundabouts dito sa Metropolis o ang tinatawag nating mga rotonda. We normally take rotondas for granted as commonplace sites. But as drivers, do you know what is the proper and safe way to treat a rotonda? Who has the right of way here? Vehicles inside the roundabout have the right of way. Dahil dito, any vehicle getting into a roundabout should give way to those that are already within the circle and should wait for a safe gap of vehicles before attempting to drive into the circle or for a vehicle that's already inside to give way to you before entering. Kung papasok pa lamang kayo sa rotonda, mangyari lamang na magbigay daan sa mga sasakyang nasa loob na ng rotonda bago pumasok. Sila po ang nauna at sila ang may right of way. Kung tayo lahat ay magre-respeto sa salitang right of way, may iiwasan natin ang aksidente sa daan. Until the next time here on Motoring Today's Young Street Smarts portion, where you can learn how to be safe while on the road as a pedestrian, commuter, biker, or a driver. This is Susie of Magic 89.9, reminding you to always be a safe and responsible road user. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, Mitsubishi Motors Philippines for so many years, 
has been encouraging proper driver demeanor at all times via these weekly reminders for the Pinoy driver. Payong chopper lang kaibigan. Ako si Renato Sibalios, isa pong kapwa ninyo chopper. Iwasan po natin ang pagpapatungtong ng sobrang lakas na musika sa ating mga sasakyan, lalo na po habang ito'y tumatakbo sa daan. Dapat nating malaman na ang pagpapatugtog ng loud music sa loob ng sasakyan, pampasahero man ito o privado, ay di lamang nakakapwerhisyo. Ito rin ay delikado. Kapag tayo ay nagpapatugtog ng malakas, ito ay nagdudulot ng ingay at nakakaabala rin sa ibang tao. Ang atensyon natin ay nababaling sa musika at hindi sa pagmamaneho natin. At kung tayo ay distracted, hindi tayo alerto sa mga nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran. Kapag ito ang nangyari, di lamang ikaw ang madidisgrasya, pati na rin ang ibang motorista. Kaya palaging tatandaan, habang tayo ay nagmamaneho, kailangan palagi tayong alisto sa ating paligid. Ito po si Renato Sibalios, payong chopper lang kaibigan, mula sa isang kapwa niyo chopper. We'll have the latest news in the motor industry up ahead. But before that, we have some vehicle maintenance reminders for you, courtesy of Isuzu Philippines. Having your tire get flat while in the middle of the road can cause a lot of hassle, both for you and the other road users. How to prevent having a flat tire and how to maintain it is what we'll talk about in this week's Auto Care Clinic, courtesy of Isuzu Philippines Corporation. Unang una, siguraduhin na laging nasa correct tire pressure ang iyong mga gulong. Ang gulong na masyadong malambot ay madaling mabubuta sa daan. Pangalawa, gawing ugali na tingnan ang kondisyon ng iyong mga gulong bawat linggo. Dahil sa magagandang quality ng mga kasalukuyang goma na tubeless, hindi agad puputok ang gulong kapag napadaan sa mga pako o matutulis na bagay. Kadalasan ay tutusok lang ang pako sa gulong at gagawa ito ng tinatawag na slow leak. Ang gulong na may slow leak ay magagamit pa rin, ngunit kailangan ma-vulcanize agad upang hindi lumaki ang sira sa goma. Kapag nakakita kayo ng pako o tornilyo o kung anumang nakatusok sa inyong gulong, huwag na nating i-delay ang pagpapavulcanize nito. Ayaw na ayaw natin na bumigay ang gulong sa daan. Alam niyo ba na ang pudpod na gulong ay mas madaling maflatan? Nangyayari ito dahil mas manipis na ang thread ng gulong. At dahil dito ay mas madaling tumagos ang mga matutulis na bagay. Kapag madalas na kayong napaflatan, senyales ito na kailangan na sigurong bumili ng bagong gulong. Paano naman kung naflatan ka nga? Madali lang ang pagpalit ng gulong. Kung nangyari ito sa daan, i-on mo ang hazard lights at dahan-dahan ang pagparada sa shoulder ng kalye upang hindi makasagabal sa ibang motorista. Huwag pong pepreno ng malakas dahil hindi balanse ang iyong sasakyan at baka mawalan kayo ng kontrol. Kapag napatigil na ang sasakyan, ilabas ang iyong early warning device at ilagay ng 15 to 20 feet mula sa likod ng iyong sasakyan. Kaya po medyo malayo ay upang mas makita agad ng kapwa motorista upang maiwasan kayo agad. Next, ilabas ang tire jack, cross wrench at spare tire. Bago man iangat ang sasakyan, luwagan na ang nut ng flat tire upang mas madali itong tanggalin. Kailangan mo itong gawin dahil mahirap luwagan ang mga nut kapag umiikot na ang gulong sa ere. Kapag naluwagan na, iposisyon ang tire jack sa lift points ng kaha. Makikita ang mga marka nito sa ilalim ng sasakyan, pero kung hindi kayo sigurado kung saan, malalaman ito sa iyong owner's manual. Mahalaga pong gamitin ang tire jack sa wastong lift point upang hindi madamage ang kaha ng iyong sasakyan. Kapag mataas na ang sasakyan, ipwesto ang spare tire sa ilalim ng kaha para kung sakaling biglang bumigay ang tire jack ay masasalo ng gulong ang sasakyan. Kapag nakalawit na ang flat tire, simulan na ang alisin ang mga lug nut nito upang matanggal ang gulong. Kapag natanggal na, ipagpalit ang spare tire sa flat at ilagay ang mga lug nut. Kapag secure na ang gulong, alisin ang flat tire sa ilalim ng kaha at unti-unting ibaba ang sasakyan. Kapag nakababa na ang sasakyan, higpitan ang mga lug nut sa tinatawag na star pattern upang pumantay ang torque nito. Finally, iligpit ng maayos ang mga gamit. Huwag kalimutan ang early warning device. Mabuti rin kung may baon kang panglinis ng kamay upang hindi madumihan ang loob ng iyong Isuzu.
Now that you know how, do it regularly so you can avoid having a flat tire. It's easy and helpful. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the local auto industry. Isuzu Philippines Corporation recently held a camping event held at the Makiling Botanic Gardens. The participants were composed of three Isuzu car clubs in the country, namely Team Isuzu Pilipinas, Team Isuzu Car Enthusiasts, and the MUX Owners Philippines. With the aim to promote environmental awareness and Filipino culture, the two-day event started with the orientation about the Makiling Forest Reserve followed by a demonstration on how to properly plant a seedling. Afterwards, the participants headed to Isuzu Philippines' adopted 13-hectare forest land inside of the Botanic Garden to plant additional seedlings. During the second day of the event, participants who have signed up for the mountain trek were assigned by Isuzu Philippines going to Makiling's Mud Spring and Flat Rocks. Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation recently held the 20th staging of the annual Mitsubishi Skills Olympics or MSO. Held at the City Motors dealership in Las Piñas City, the MSO was attended by 150 participants coming from 50 service outlets and 21 dealerships nationwide. During the two-day event, the MSO Olympians were divided into several categories. The uh, competition ranges from vehicle sales. We have vehicle sales, passenger cars, and the Fuso trucks. Next is the service technician. We have a category on junior and senior technician. We also have a competition on our service advisors and parts specialist. And this year, we added a uh, exhibition inviting our partner technical schools. And uh, they are represented about five candidates. This year's MSO competitors were composed of select Mitsubishi technicians and sales staff from across the country. We wanted to gauge and uh, check the skills and competency of our dealer personnel in terms of sales, service and parts. And then also to tell the customers that we are really uh, elevating our skills to be able to provide customer satisfaction. Aside from winning the title, the winners will get a chance to represent the Philippines in the Mitsubishi Motors Global Service Skills Contest held at Biennale in Japan. Honda Cars Philippines Incorporated recently launched the new city in an event held at the City of Dreams, Paranaque City. With the concept Advanced Energetic Smart Star, Honda unveiled the refreshed look of the new city with a high-tech and sporty design, fuel-efficient and with safety features that provide customers with the smartest ownership experience. Honda also presented the interior of the new city, starting with its more advanced design, decorative panel and plush leather seats for the VX Plus variant that highlight the new city's sporty feel. The new city's gauges and push start button have also been redesigned. For added convenience, the VX and VX Plus variants are now equipped with cruise control that maintains a steady driving speed set by the driver. The release specs of the new city include a 1.5-liter iVTEC SOHC four-cylinder engine that produces 120 PS at 6,600 RPM and 14.8 kgm of torque at 4,800 RPM. The new city also features Honda's Echo Assist system which consists of the Econ button and Eco Coaching ambient meter to promote smart and fuel-efficient driving habit. For the city, uh, it offers the best value in its class. The overall package of the city in terms of the features, the class leading space, drivetrain which balances power and efficiency, makes it one of the best buy and uh, most value proposition in its segment. Another highlight of the event was the introduction of the newly seated Honda Cars Philippines President and General Manager, Nuriyuki Takakura. I joined Honda around 15 years ago, and after that, I basically worked in Honda in domestic market in Japan. And especially, I had experience in the marketing, product planning, and so on. And then after that, 
I was in charge of、uh, Hokkaido area in Japan for two years. Then, after that, I was assigned to move to Australia for four years and stayed there and worked as CEO and managing director of Honda Australia. Then, newly, I was assigned to the president of the Honda Cars Philippines from April this year. Only been here for two months since Takakura san was assigned as the new president and general manager of Honda Cars Philippines. A few things have caught his attention, and this is also his first time in the country. One of the interesting things for me is the Philippine market is actually growing. Market, economy, it is growing much faster than other countries, even in Asia countries. As such, we are having a good view for the Philippine market, Philippine economy. And also, I was fully impressed that Philippine people are very open and very friendly. So I'm very happy to work here in the Philippines. During his reign, Takakura san is positive towards Honda having a larger market in the Philippines. As you know, the city is well、uh, accepted from the customers in the Philippines because of the good styling and good features. And this model change, we enhanced such a good styling more and more. Actually, as you can see, for example, front grille is much more stylish, smarter. So then we are very confident that our customers love this new car also. We are very keen to introduce good models, very good features, and very good price to this market. Thank you very much for your support again. Thank you. The winners of the 2017 STV Auto Rally Corporate Challenge were recently awarded in a ceremony held at the Valle Verde Club. The 2017 STV ARCC was flagged off at the Harbor Point Mall in Subic with the theme On Time All the Time. It is a motorsport competition based on Europe's Tulip Rally, which is locally known as the Sambagita Rally, that reigned supreme in local motorsports during the 60s and 70s. Through ARCC, Sunshine Television, and Sociocom Foundation for Asia have been promoting road safety as well as camaraderie among corporate members of the local auto industry. For this year's ARCC, the corporate rally teams from Audi, Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Lexus, Mini, Nissan, Sangyong, Subaru, And Tata came to compete and field their flashy as brand new models. Now here are the teams that registered perfect times in different checkpoints during the competition. Subaru Rally Team Car Number Twenty Four had zero demerit in checkpoints number six and ten, with Rafi David, Dennis Ayuyao, and Oric go aboard. Meanwhile, Mini Rally Team Car Number Five registered perfect times in checkpoints Number Nine and Number Ten, maneuvered by Mike Potenciano, Lindy Pelissar, and Milo Rivera. And Hyundai Rally Team Car Number Thirty had zero demerit in checkpoint Number Four, piloted by Ray Ablang, Butch Angeles, and Christian Fernandez. For the individual team awards, Mini Rally Team Car Number Five placed second runner-up with 841 demerits, while Super Rally Team Car Number Thirteen won first runner-up with 731 demerits. And Car Number Twenty Four, also coming from Super Rally Team, brought home the championship with 514 demerits. And for the corporate team awards, Honda Rally Team placed second runner-up with 2,780 demerits. While Mini Rally Team won first runner-up with 2,261 demerits, and Subaru Rally Team as the champion with 1,743 demerits. This is the Subaru Rally Team's third championship, which gained the distinction of bringing home permanently the champion's trophy, duplicating the feat first achieved by the Mini Rally Team last year. It's a great sport. I think more people should do it, and it's a good advocacy, STV, because this promotes road safety and awareness of the rules, right? Because that's a, a fundamental part of the rules of this race. It's not necessarily a speed race; it's a team effort, actually. If the three people in the car, if the teamwork collapses, if they fight or they don't get along, certainly they won't win. The whole thing collapses. So it's. Working together with people that makes you win. 
The 2017 STV ARCC is made possible by Ayala Harbor Point, Subic Bay Freeport, Socialcom Foundation for Asia, and Young Street Smart Club, and Sunshine Television. Motoring Today now brings you our Car of the Week on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Every car enthusiast loves a wagon. Whether or not he'll admit that in public is another matter. But ask him what comprises his dream garage and 100% of the time there'll be a wagon in that list. Usually people see them as something dorky but it's undeniable that the wagon is essentially the best all-rounder in the automotive world. It's a car with all the benefits and none of the side effects. Today we look at one of the most beautiful wagons on sale today, the Master 6 Sports Wagon. to what most people think, the Mazda 6 sports wagon isn't just a case of automotive cut and paste. The dimensions alone tell the story. The wagon is marginally shorter in both length and wheelbase. It's also slightly taller, but because of the roof rails. Of course, without looking at the spec sheet or brochure, there's no way of telling. The Mazda 6, even in its wagon form, is every bit as sexy. In fact, you can go as far as saying that it's the better looking of the two. The best part of the transformation is actually the 6 wagon exclusive grille. It may not look that different from the sedan, but at night, an LED strip outlines the grille, creating an unmistakable presence. As such, in this class, it's the little things that matter. Despite the reduced wheelbase, there is no discernible difference to the interior room. It's the same experience you get in the sedan with generous shoulder, hip, and knee room. Since this is a car made to be driven, not to be ridden, the front seats offer the best experience with a great balance between comfort and support. The seats don't look as plush or wide in pictures, but it manages to make short work of long-distance driving. The rear ones are less stellar, but they're good nonetheless. The biggest difference between the sedan and the wagon is found in the headroom. While going in and out of the front seats will ruin jello-fixed hipster hair, there's more headroom at the back simply because of the roof line. It doesn't feel as claustrophobic. As a wagon, it offers a much larger cargo hold. Feature comfort features are the same for both the sedan and wagon. And this equates to a fully loaded interior with stuff like push button start stop, passive entry, powered front seats, a moonroof, and even a Bose sound system, all as standard equipment. Sharing its mechanicals with a sedan, the Mazda 6 Sports Wagon gets the same 2.5-liter Sky Active G engine putting out 188 horsepower and 250 newton meter of torque. It's slightly heavier though, weighing 1,491 kilograms versus 1,444 kilograms. Behind the wheel though, the experience is pretty much the same. There's no shortage of power whatever situation you find yourself in. Whether you're just puttering in the city or driving high speed on the expressway, the drivetrain is so well-tuned that you never need to reach for the paddle shifters or even the driver's selector mode. 
Like the sedan, the wagon is largely quiet. Now equipped with G Veteran Control or GVC, the Mazda 6 Sports Wagon feels like a well-sorted machine. It rightfully deserves the sport in its name with a steering that's noticeably quicker and a body that feels nimbler with much less understeer even when compared to the sedan. As the segment's only executive wagon, the Master 6 Sports Wagon has this segment all to itself. It's designed for the one who wants something different, who wants something special. The Master 6 is for the guy who doesn't play by the rules and he wants his car to reflect that very persona. The Master 6 Sports Wagon goes a step further. The final stretch of Motor Day comes up after this short break. I shall be right back. Our public service portion, courtesy of Ford Philippines, is next. We come once again to another edition of your weekly public service segment, proudly brought to you by Ford Group Philippines. This is where we highlight different motoring problems being sent to us or we ourselves encounter along the road. In any public vehicle, passengers' comfort and safety are two of the most important things to consider. In this photo taken along Miralco Avenue in Pasig City, a lady is seen sitting on an extra seat placed in the middle of the Jeep. Aside from it, it's not safe and comfortable. It is also a known regulation that extra seats in jeepneys are prohibited as well as pagsabit. Scenarios like this shouldn't be ignored. With that, we will make sure to ask and inform the proper authorities regarding this matter. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. If you missed some portions of our show today or any of the past episodes of Motoring Today, you can watch them online on motoringtoday.ph anytime of the day at your convenience. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now in its 30th year of continuing service, to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. I'm Butch Gamboa. Happy motoring.